We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody, this is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show coming live at you in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. And look what we got here. One baby step at a time. Slowly, slowly catching the monkey. Yeah, they brought some more soil, which oh, some of you have been asking, where is this soil coming from? It's coming from two lots over. Um, the soil is like really different in different areas here. And the soil that they were digging up over there, making somebody's foundations for their home, it's really good stuff. I mean, the stuff we had was good, but this stuff's like really good. And then what we're going to do is to make it really, really, really good by adding in some kind of composting element. So we have some actual compost, and I was just talking with a guy today about maybe getting some ash from a sugarcane factory, which is something that people often do here to um, feed the soil, and horse manure as well. We have tons of horse manure, so we're probably going to do a combination of those three, mix up this soil with that so it's just like off the hook nutritious, and then these beds are going to get filled in. I heard that they got to wear gloves when they deal with the horse manure. Did you hear about that? Mm -mm. If they have an open cut and they're dealing with the ho dealing with the horse manure, it will kill them. Wow, that sounds pretty intense. They to, and they what happens is they need to rush to the hospital, <laughs> and there's a chance that they might be able to survive. There's something in the horse poo. Who said that? Jose. Maybe wow. we should go talk to him about it right now. <laughs> the expert with horse poop, Jose. One second. Okay, so we got Jose here. He's gonna explain all this to you for us. You were mentioning to me earlier that uh, if somebody was messing around with horse poop and they were to have a cut on their finger, it would kill them. Yeah, in English? <laughs> yeah. In, in English? Yeah. Yeah, in this uh, horse pop, there are some bacteria. We call tetanos in Spanish. In English, I don't know. And you have an injury in your body, especially oh, in your heart. Tetanus. Tetanus, yeah. Oh. You go this bacteria in your hand, and then if you don't go fast to the doctor, you will die. <laughs> and you will be a um, compost, like the pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous occupation. Jose is helping us with lots of things here. He's very useful with his hands and he knows a lot about the trees and the plants here. You're actually a guide, right? Like native a native guide, a touristic guide. Yeah. For Vilcabamba? Yeah, for the National Park, for the Carpus National Park. Wow. And he speaks English and of course he speaks Spanish fluently, so he's helping us to communicate with people as well. And look what he did. He put up a hammock for us. I've always wanted a hammock and he just put this up a couple of days ago and I had my dinner sitting in here yesterday and I was just in actual bliss sitting in a hammock. It's actually an om gym. I forgot the straps and she made a hammock out of it, but it, om gyms are used for hammocks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm so excited to get the straps for this thing. We're, I'm going to be hanging and all that fun stuff. And then we'll get another hammock. So for now, the om gym is the hammock. So did you want to show everybody the trees? Yeah, I wanted to show you... Um, this was so exciting. Was that yesterday or the day before? There's a guy around here who works for this government scheme where they're doing reforestation with native trees. And he comes to your land and he surveys the land and he works out exactly how many trees it would be useful to have on any piece of land. So he gave us all these trees. He gave us like a hundred and something trees. And some of them, this one, which, which one is the Wilco? It's this one, right? This Wilco? Yeah. This, yeah. One. this one here is what Vilcabamba is named after. The Wilco, like sacred Wilco tree. And then what else do we have? We have um, tomato, tomato tree. Tomato tree. Tomato de arbol. Tomato de arbol. And this makes like these kind of reddish, pinkish fruits that you can put in juice and stuff. And then he gave us papayas. Where are they? Oh, that, that, yeah, we bought those ones. So there's these baby ones that he gave us as well. And 
What's the other one? Chang Changi. Changi. Is that is that this one? Yeah. Yeah. This one. And so this one and the Wilco, they don't really produce food, but they produce like a kind of gum, like a resin. Um, like almost, I think it would probably turn into amber, right? If you left it. I think yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then some other ones as well. And so he just came and gave us all these trees, like a hundred and something trees for free. And now we're starting to plant them. Jose's son is helping us to plant them around the perimeter. So we're going to create like a green fence around the perimeter. Yeah, it's some government reforestation program, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And I just ordered a hundred fig trees today. <laughs> Right, babe? And yeah. some of them are pretty mature, right? Yeah. 100 fig trees. We're going to have a fig tree forest. That's all I care about. <laughs> and how much is that going to cost? Like $200 for 100 fig trees? I don't know. I don't know how much they are. Uh, but yeah, a few hundred dollars, I would think. And a few years into production, they're going to pay back for themselves many times over already. <laughs> right on. So, um, isn't it true that, what are fig trees called out, figs called out here? They're not... He, he goes. Uh, eagles. 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 We call eagles in Spanish. Right. And when the figs is uh, black, it's ready for it directly. No, no, uh, no cook it. Just, just eat. Oh. And it's sweet. Do people cook the green ones? The here? green ones. The black ones, no. Okay, that makes more sense. We've seen a lot of green figs for sale here, and we were like, why are they selling them like this? It's driving me nuts. They're hard as a rock. They're useless. <laughs> they're nutrient deficient. I'm like wondering. I'm like, I'm telling them that they're just not letting them ripen up, and that's what's going on. They're just cooking them. How do people cook them? What do they do with them? Add uh, the honey, and it's a, like a... Um, jam. Jam. Yeah, okay. It's like a jam. Like a jelly. Yeah. yeah, because it's, it's, it's all the uh, figs, just cut in four yeah. and put it with the honey and boil for a couple of minutes or maybe one hour. But if they left the green figs on the tree, they would become brown and they would be good. No, no, no. It's better to leave in the tree. Yeah. And when the tree is black, yeah. it's red. Okay. Right. It's dry. So they should be good. I'm creating, we're creating an entire fig tree forest. There's no doubt. That land over there is going to be a fig tree forest. That's all it is going to be. Like way over there past those trees. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, and who do we have here, this lovely, beautiful goddess? Angela Stokes Monarch. And we've got? Jose. And Matt Monarch. And we'll see you again tomorrow in Vilcabamba, Ecuador at the Raw Food World TV. Show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.